you've been working with uh, Sato for quite some time now. What can we ex- expect to see him uh, Saturday night after a layoff like this? I think uh, Sato's improved a lot in his game, especially in his ground game, his wrestling game. Um, and he's always been a striker, right? He lets that left hand go and can put people out. Like, he's got a lot of knockouts. But I think he's also just more relaxed, uh, more well-rounded, and just more comfortable. Like he said, we got a lot of bodies coming at him, a lot of <clears throat> different styles, a lot of different people in the gym. So he's seen it all. You know, he's seen guys that are good at jiu-jitsu, guys that are good at wrestling, guys that are good at striking. He's, he's seen it all, and he's been preparing for this. I mean, not this particular fight, but he's in the gym. He's always waiting to fight. You know, since I've been there and, and, and you know, for a couple of years, he's always like, oh, Sato's going to fight, and then he doesn't, then he does, then he doesn't. So he's, he's like not burning himself out, but he's, he's always ready. And then he got this call, and he was so excited for it. And he's like, oh, let's go, let's go. You know, it's, it's nice working with people like that where they just want to get in there and fight. Mm-hmm. What's the protocol for, for a team like Sanford, a big gym, once a, a fighter gets a short notice fight like that? What can you do on, on two weeks? I mean, you really can't do anything. You know, it's a short notice. And, and even, I feel like uh, with so many people in the gym, you don't really game plan necessarily for a certain person. Like, I used to kind of focus on that a lot when I was, you know, training fighters back in the days. I'd You just game plan for one thing, one thing. And then all of a sudden, it seems like all of a sudden you're in the fight and you're like, the guy's waiting for that thing to happen and it doesn't happen. So it's almost good when these short notice fights come up because then you don't overthink it mm-hmm. you know you're not like well if he's going to do this he's going to do that and you're preparing for that one thing it's like it's just going to be him versus the other guy and, and the best guy comes out right there's just two skilled fighters going out there doing what they do best mm-hmm. you know they're not like looking and waiting they're just going to go fight we've seen a lot of short notice fights that turn out to be really good and, and i think they both match up pretty stylistically well you know they both got that kind of long style gunner's got that i remember seeing him back in the days at uh, a gym in new york and I just watch this guy. He'd come out there and spar with these guys. It looks like he wasn't doing anything. He'd just kind of walk. Just walk, and he's just picking guys off, and then he takes them down when he wants. I mean, he, he's something special. He's something fun to watch. And, and so is Sato, so that's what's going to make it a good fight. So you had uh, – did you spend some time with him in New York back in uh, at Hensos? Yeah, 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 he was at Hensos. I never, I never worked with him, but I'd, I'd bring guys in there, and I worked with some of the fighters in the gym, and I'd see him spar. And, yeah, he was he's a cool guy and, and very skilled. Like I, like I said, I'd watch him spar, and he'd, he'd just look like he's doing nothing. You know, he looks so relaxed. He'd walk out there and – he has that stance, you know, and he just start picking guys apart, and it seems like nobody really knew what to do with him, you know. So, and I haven't seen him fight in a while, and so I don't know. It should be fun. Uh, you obviously had, have Gilbert Burns in the gym. Uh, was he able to help you in uh, preparing for this fight? I mean, a little bit. Gilbert gave him a little bit of work, but you know, he, he he's worked him, and he's always working with him. So I guess he's kind of always, mm-hmm. you know, getting prepared with a high level jiu jitsu guy. But but you know, Gunnar's different, right? I mean, he's got a different kind of style. He's, everybody's got their own style mm-hmm. to him, so. I don't think there could be any one particular person that can help him in this situation. And, and I don't know, that's why it's going to be fun. You know, it's like style versus style. Like, mm-hmm. that's what you can't prepare necessarily for certain guys. You can try to see what they're going to do. But once you get in there, right, the bell rings, the fight's a fight, and we just see what happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look at Gunnar, uh, what do you see uh, in terms of strength and, and maybe some weaknesses in, in his game? I mean, I don't know if there's any one particular strength or one particular weakness. Like I said, he just kind of goes at a good pace. You know what I mean? He doesn't. I want to say like he doesn't do this great because he does a lot of great things, you know. But I don't know. I, I, I think Sato's style matches up well for him. You know, I mean, he he, he can crack, you know. And, and I've never been hit by Gunner, so I can't, mm-hmm. you know, tell you what, what his punches feel like. But, uh, yeah, I don't think there is, like, if he does this and he does that, that'll happen. But I don't know. We'll just, we'll just have to see. You know, I'm, I'm obviously rooting for my guy, but I'm also rooting for a good fight. Mm-hmm. And finally, how? Uh, what is your prediction for Saturday? I mean, I got kill one of my prediction. I mean, I could say, you know, my guy's going to win. He's going to catch him with a punch, knock him out. I, I guess I'll just stick with that, you know. <laughs> it's hard to predict in a fight like this, you know, two, two very skilled fighters. But, and of course, I got to go for my guy, you know. And we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Thank you for the time.